Hey, what's up YouTube, Scavenger here, and we're back on day 14 with a summary of how our attack against Oppa Volta went. So as you can see, King Kongo and I have both jumped up in the placings, and King Kongo is sitting just behind first place by three victory points, that is not much at all. And I'm sitting in third place, fairly, quite the way far back actually, when you consider how far ahead these guys are, in third place. So we have managed to jump up by consuming Oppa Volta, and our attack was incredibly successful. Over day change we have had some provinces rebel and we are going back and capturing those as we speak. As you'd expect, the largest economies have gone to the largest players in the game. And a few things here are out of order, but generally the larger the player, the bigger the economy. So if we have a look at the map, as you can see we have pushed up a lot. Going based off the areas of low morale, we can see a clear line along here where we have pushed up over the last day. So from that we can now see what Oppervolta has left and in the region it is two provinces over here, a province that we bow down here and two provinces over here. Once we get rid of those he'll be pushed out of the region and into the Middle East. So I want to have the time to talk about this attack because it is a good example of coordination and teamwork. South Africa and I put a lot of planning into this attack and it really paid off well. The small things were done right. We analysed every single communication we had with Oppa Volta and I know this seems a little cheesy guys but we created a graph and some lovely images to find out when he was online and based on this alone, this is in our Pacific Standard Time, we were able to figure out that he's least active between 5am and 1pm. So. When did we attack? 5 a.m. We gained his trust, we got troops as close as to his core as we could without breaking it, and then come 5 a.m. when we suspected Oppa Volta to be offline, we went in. By doing that, we gave ourselves a pretty big window before he'd be back online. And although I don't know how effective it was, by the time we got our first communication by him, we'd already achieved our primary goals. So. Our primary goals going in, and this is a big thing of what you need to think about when you're attacking, is we had three goals. I had one goal to accomplish, and South Africa had two, but one of those was with my help. So goal number one was for South Africa at 5am to divert his ships that were under the ruse of going to attack South America. They were to disembark and immediately spread out over his core, and capture as many territories as possible. And this was incredibly effective and he was able to accomplish most of it before UV got back online, uh, Oppa Volta got back online. And the main objective of that was to absolutely decimate his economy and take out his main industrial centers. Even if we have a look at these now, we can see that a lot of them before the attack would have been level 3, 4 or maybe even 5 industrial centers. So that is the bulk of his production gone. Over here on the other hand, my goal was to capture three production sites. These three production sites were the next closest to our core and would be the ones he'd be able to defend if it came to it. So we have this production site here, here and here. Fairly well upgraded and if we had left those he could have produced troops from there and would have been able to outflank us, especially if he had been successful in the Middle East. So. It was incredibly vital that we captured these as well as the ones down here. Then there was the third goal and that was the capture of the airbase that was up here. It's now been destroyed but that was a joint effort between us. I preemptively gave South Africa a trade for that unit for the tank that captured that which is now actually up there and what it did was it allowed him considering South Africa was awake at the time while I was asleep to march it all the way up and capture the runway here. Now because Oppa Volta was offline it didn't have as big of an effect as we would hope but it was successful in cutting his runway network in half and leaving nearly all of his planes stuck on this side. So as you can see here we're mopping up a few of them that were largely unprotected and it was pretty easy. He could have put up more of a fight with his air force but by that point, considering he wasn't able to get back to his core to protect it and his resources, there wasn't much he could do. So by taking that runway, we stopped his ear from retreating and defending his core. 
At the same time, I push forwards in conjunction with South Africa, and we have been able to accomplish all of this in a day and a half with very few casualties. Uh, I've also been able to jump over here and do a little bit of a land grab. Sorry, Lord Keck, I um, I want that land though. Um, need it. So that's that. Now, just quickly while I'm here, looks like we are about to get a supply drop that is there. So let's just have a quick look at what that is. Ah, mechanized infantry. Don't use that often. And I still need five more. So that's that. And let's close the ads and continue. So going forwards, like I said before, we still have a few areas that we need to mop up. But we also need to take some time to work on our economy and build things up again. As you can see, our food production has dropped, but that will increase again as the morale of these territories increases, and with it, their food production will increase as well. For the time being, I'm just going to turn my morale map off so we can see the territory that is under our control, because as some of you probably didn't notice, we managed to grab this as well, and it came with an upgraded naval base which is great because we need one of those as we develop our navy so if we have a look at the territory in the region we can see that South Africa controls a lot of it and that's not an issue he's our ally so if he wins we win and I control a large portion of the rest of it down here we also have Ben and I'm just gonna call him Ben because I can't pronounce the full name and we have Ethiopia so going forward we're gonna to have to do something about these two players here Ben has been pretty inactive over the past few days, in fact we've seen very little movement at all. We were expecting him to actually go inactive today. So over the next four days we're going to spend some time doing some house cleaning, working our economies, building up our armies and just getting some stuff done. So for the next four days we have the goals of removing Ben, figuring out what to do with Ethiopia, I'll let him get back to me first about how long he thinks he'll be, and then we also have to remove this guy. And we also have to clean up a few territories in the region and let our morale increase. So over the next four days, there isn't going to be any major offensives. We're just going to plan, rebuild, and rearm, and be ready for what comes in the next few days. If we have a look at what I'm building at the moment, I'm actually not building all that much, or even training that many troops. I'm building a whole bunch of subs. Oh, there's some units here that need to be cancelled, and I can reap some rewards from them. Get some resources because I'm not going to build an industrial center just to complete a light tank or militia. So as you can see, I'm building a lot of ships, submarines, and one cruiser. So before the attack, like I said, we would we moved our submarines up into here to make sure no troops were able to retreat across. Now that wasn't an issue because he didn't send any troops back across. So I'm moving these forwards and back up to here to fortify this area and protect it. Now that we've got a cruiser coming, we need some sub protection so we can build up a naval group in here. So that brings me to the next point, why I'm building so many submarines. Because we had to move a large portion of the wall up to here to do that, and at the same time we were suspicious that the South Americans might try something, so I shifted the whole wall down to protect all of this territory down here, thus leaving South Africa's core protected as well. So we need to build up that sub wall again and get it re-erected so we have that protection that we need. In terms of building, I am building actually quite a few buildings and just trying to boost oil production and over the next few days I'm going to spend a little bit on food but like I said before, just generally morale increasing will increase that production. So as you can see I'm building a lot of naval bases, I'm building three and that's so we can start producing cruisers. And once the, these are done, we can then start producing battleships. If we have a look in the research tab, you can see that we are researching battleships now and destroyers level 3. So once we get the rear as well, tomorrow morning, I will start researching the aircraft carrier. And then we can you know, start to even out and work on these things as we go. But I'm going to have to jump back pretty soon to research aircraft again, get the next armor upgrade, Next infantry isn't for a while, but I also have to get rockets and maybe even commandos. So I've got quite a few things I need to work on, and we'll just go by how much resources we have at the time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.